Okay, I'm going to provide some tips on doing some of the SDS problems. Let's start with problem 13. In problem 13, after reading this, you see that you have information on the mean and standard deviation, um, and you need to calculate the probability that the average monthly mortgage payment will exceed the true mean, 732, by more than $50. All you have to do is calculate the probability x bar that x bar is more than seven hundred and eighty two dollars that's um, the mean plus fifty okay so standardizing that um, with the new mean you should be able to get the answer So, the information tells us that x is distributed with the mean, uh, it doesn't tell us how it's distributed, it doesn't tell us the shape, um, but the mean is 732 and the standard deviation is 421. If we take a sample of 125, then the sample mean will be approximately normal, according to the central limit theorem. The mean will be the same 732 and the standard deviation will be calculated by taking uh, 421 divided by the square root of 125 to get 37.66. Using this mean and the new standard deviation, standardize the probability of x bar greater than 782, and you should easily get the answer, which is E. All right, to manage question 22, let's write down what we know. We know that x is distributed um, with a mean of 6.3 and a standard deviation of 0 0.866. What is x? x is the amount of time devoted to commercials on a TV channel during any half-hour program, okay? So, the amount of time is going to be uh, 6.3 minutes on average in any half-hour program with a standard deviation of 0.866. Now we're going to take 36 half-hour programs, so that's our sample, And we're going to talk about x bar. x bar is approximately normal. Again, remember, we don't know the shape of the distribution, but n is bigger than 25. So the sampling distribution of the sample mean is approximately normal with the same mean, but a standard deviation that's smaller. I take 0 0.866 and divide by the square root of 36, which is 6, 
can I get? 0 0.1443. Three, if I want to hold two more than what I started with. Okay, so now I want to know about the probability that a person in this sample will be exposed to over 220 minutes total. But I need to know in each half hour program, right? So I need to take the 220 minutes and divide it into half hour programs um, and see what the average is. Well, we watched 36 half hour programs, so what's the average? 220 divided by 36. If it's 220 for 36 hours, how much is it on average? That's going to be 6.11. So what we want to find out is what's the probability that x bar exceeds so bar 6.11. This is what you're going to standardize using this distribution for x bar and you should be able to get the answer C. There are several problems that um, emphasize the point of uh, exercise 30. So I'm going to try this and hopefully you can get the hang of it for the other problems. All right, a number of undergraduate students at a university, University 1, is approximately 7,000. And the corresponding number at another university, University 2, is uh, 22,000. So these values correspond to, like, capital... And one so the population of University 1 students and this is for population and 2 of University 2 students and this is for the undergrads right suppose that at each university a simple random sample of 3% is taken and they're going to be asked a question about whether they favor the government Within each university, approximately 30% of the respondents favor the government. What statements can you make about the sampling variability associated with the two sample proportions? Okay, so what number is this here? This is going to represent uh, the P's, both for population 1 and population 2. They're identical, aren't they? What's our uh, sample size? Well, sample size will be 3%, so it's going to be the same um, at each university, 3% of either amount, okay? So 3%, what's 3% of 7,000? That would be, that would give you N1. And then N2 would be 3% of 22,000. That would give you N2. So I can write that here as 0.3 of N1, and this one is 0.3 of N2. And um, uh, keep in mind that N1 is smaller than N2, okay? What is the sampling variability associated with the sample proportion? In each case, we have to think about the formula for the sample proportion. It's going to be P times 1 minus P over N square root. And that's in each case. So the P's are the same for both populations. But the n's are different, right? The little n, it's going to be bigger for the bigger population. So for n2, it's going to be bigger. So we can be pretty sure that the sampling proportion of uh, the sampling variability of the 
the two sample proportions will vary and uh, N2 will have a smaller one, right? Because N2 has a larger, um, is a larger value. So going through the options, N2, whichever one says that N2, sorry, that, that population 2 has a smaller sampling variability, that'll be your answer. So that answer, the answer has to be B. To answer this problem, what sample size would be required in order to reduce the standard deviation of the sample proportion to one half? We use the rule we learned about, um, um, it's actually in the box, in a box, in the notes. Um, and it's a result of the deriving the sampling distribution of the sample mean. And it says that if you want to reduce the standard deviation, so we'll say the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean by one kth, then what you have to do is take the sample size and uh, make it bigger by a factor of k squared. So if we want to half the standard deviation, then we're going to have to um, multiply the sample by 4 because 4 is uh, 2 squared. What if we wanted to, well actually I should stop there and um, answer the question. Here the sample size is 1600 so you would have to take 4 times 1600 so your answer must be D. To answer this question for 33, in a particular city, uh, district of a city, there are 20,000 households. In this district, the average household income is given and the standard deviation. Um, the household income distribution is known to be skewed. Now, 400 households are randomly selected. How can you describe the sampling distribution of the average household in the sample? Well, the sample size was 400, even though we didn't know the shape uh, precisely of the, uh, the population, we do know that it's skewed to the right, okay? Um, it doesn't matter because of the central limit theorem. If we sample more than 25, then we should be comfortable that um, the distribution will be approximately normal with the same mean, 30,000. Okay, so it's either C or D. Um, and the standard deviation should be smaller by a factor of dividing by square root of 400. So the new standard deviation should be equal to the original one divided by square root of n. So that's 10,000 divided by the square root of 400, which works out to be 10,000 divided by square root of 400 works out to be $500. So the answer is D.